Welcome back to our build series. This is episode number 82. And so we're going to get ready here and we're going to go out to the oil platform and we need to get some diesel. We need to get some jet fuel. I've spent the last two days trying to get this episode out. There's been many rant videos. There's been uh, me pulling my hair out trying to do some of the industrial frontier stuff. The logistics is terrible. I, I'm making. A, I'm gonna finish up this rant video and I'm gonna put it out. It's not really a rant. It's constructive criticism. I, you know, I tell the devs what what I think's wrong with it. And I try to explain what would be better. People have already made some add-ons for this, but again, I think it should be in the core game. But had some good news, in my opinion, certainly today with the uh, announcement of what's coming with some of these updates. So today for me is uh, May 26, 2023, and so they announced that. They're going to be uh, talking about the next major update next week on June 2nd. But then June 9th, they're coming out with some improvements, some minor improvements to Industrial Frontier. So I don't want to get into this too much. Uh, my rant video will be out by then. You can watch it if you want. And it kind of talks about what I think they should do. They made some huge logistical errors with Industrial Frontier, making it nigh unusable. And so because of that, I'm hoping they fix it. So I'm not going to bother getting into doing some of this metal stuff. I've literally spent 20 hours in the last two days trying to get this video out, and it's been pulling my teeth out trying to get that going. That's one reason I did coal was because the stuff down here in the arid biome is so logistically impractical. It doesn't make any sense from a logistics standpoint that I'm not going to bother with right now. But what we are going to do is we do need some cash. And we'll kind of talk about my philosophy and how I stay entertained with career. I'm one of the people who probably plays career the most. And so a lot of people, you know, talk about, you know, the repetition of the missions, how do you stay engaged, stuff like this. And so one of the reasons I, one of the ways I do it is I have a lot of goals. So a lot of those goals have been coming forward and they require a lot of money. And so as we have 154,000, which sounds like a good bit of money, but start getting into issues like this. For example, I think this is the island I want to buy. So I want to buy this island. I want to build our own base, and I want that to be our new base of operations. And so that would be kind of cool. You know, we can't do land stuff here, of course, but that would be kind of one of our bases of operation. And so we did this last time. I built a little cape house out there. We could launch vehicles from it. It's 100 grand. You know, my latest scraper is 80 grand, so I can't really invest too much. I also want to get back to that home ship at some point. You know, that requires a lot of cash. Also buying more of these bases. We just bought these two bases up there that ate up about a hundred grand. And so we kind of need some of that cash. And so each episode I try to come up, each game session, I try to come up with some objectives of where I'm trying to get. And so I have short-term objectives, what I might want to do this episode. Uh, and then I have longer term goals that are, you know, where I'd like to head towards. So for example, I need some money so I can get this base, build us a home base. I want to be able to get that home ship out. I would like to get up to the Arctic and just do some missions up in the Arctic. And so all these things are going to require money. So what we'll do is we'll start here and we'll use some of the things we have. I've been spending a lot of time working on that scraper just for essentially we can we can still do coal runs, but I really wanted to get into the into metal ores but it just really is not worth it right now so let's go ahead and we're going to grab the tractor our new road train tractor and we're going to grab our tanker trucks and we're going to at least start with this and that will get us going give us uh, a little something to do and we can move some of this liquid all right so here's my lead the lead is your front trailer and so I'm going to plug the lead in here. There we go. And then we're going to grab the kite. The kite is the back trailer. And so in game, I've talked about this before, you need permanent dollies. So sometimes you do have permanent dollies in some of these types of trailers. The ones I'm used to, what you'll do is the two trailers will be identical. And the only difference is you have a dolly. So you can either put one or the other in, in, in front. And that, that's very important is you always want to put the heavier trailer forward. Now you can have, I think it's about a 15% in balance. So if this was 100, you know, 1,000 liters, you could go down to 15% less on this one, you know, 85 on this one. And then you could haul the lighter one forward, but they can't be that much different. And there's some physics reasons why you you don't you uh, don't want your heavy trailer in the back. And so, anyways, so we need to put in permanent dollies. The benefit of having it where you have an independent dolly is 
If I need to switch the trailer around, I could. I can't do that. The dolly trailer always has to be in the back. So not a big deal, but uh, that's what we're working with here. So let's go ahead and let's go ahead and spawn these up. All right, and we're going to get going here. So we have our new tractor, our road train tractor, which I like to get some road train stuff in. I'm probably going to, you know, I really was chomping at the bit to try, champing at the bit, try to get uh, into Industrial Frontier. Really looking forward to doing some aluminum mining. I want to do gold, but that's a nightmare because of some logistics problems that they put in when they did it. It's not profitable. Aluminum is so much more profitable than gold, which doesn't make any sense because it's a lot more work to do gold. Uh, but that's the way it is. And so until they come out on the 9th and either fix the issues. Wow, if I cannot ever get to this, I'm going to be annoyed. So they'll either fix what I'm hoping they fix or they won't, and we can at least tell at that point, and we know what we're working with. All right, so let's raise the landing gear. Let's go ahead and we'll fire it up. Not all my lights work, but we don't need all of them. You can never tell how loud the game volume is going to be until I'm processing the video, so it's... Uh, Sometimes it's super duper loud and sometimes I can't tell. So we're going to come in and we want to line up this lead. And luckily, unlike in real life, these will just magnet together. In real life, you have to get it pretty close. You know, it's easier in real life to like, I can see in my mirror a lot better in real life than I can uh, in game. So let's go in a reverse and I'm going to try to do it staying on the cab here. So I have it in reverse one. This is an 18-speed transmission. I have four reverses. This is my slowest reverse. I most certainly want my slowest reverse. So I'm using my mirrors. Try to see if I can get there. All right, so I'm trying to go back truck with trailer. There we go. Okay. And so I... I Purposefully uh, cock the trailer a little bit so that I could see it. And that's something you do in real life is I'm making it go off on purpose so that I can keep it in my mirror. And I can even look in my offside mirror there. So I am off. And so we need to go forward. And so I need to come to my right. And now I need to straighten it out. So this is maneuvering that comes with experience. You know, I have... 12 years driving tractor trailer, so, you know, just turn your hand the right way. But I am also used to a steering wheel, so. And the trailers don't necessarily always behave themselves the way they would IRL in game, so. All right, so I can see my rear trailer now. That's why I cocked it so much, is so that I can see it. And we'll see if I can do it. If not, I'm going to have to, I'll just do it in third person. But I'm going to try make a, an attempt. So I have a jackknife quite a bit here, so I can see it. Now, if you jackknife it a lot, I can actually look out my back window. Now, this is a sleeper, but I can look out this window. And so let's actually look out this window and see if I can't get it from here. So I am pretty much jackknifed. Oop, jackknifed there. And I'm going to go forward just a little bit right there and then what I want to do is back it up and I'm going to use my mirror and I'm going to unwind so I'm going to go full right on my wheels and I'm going to try to go tractor with trailer which means you want to line them up I'm in reverse I am so I'm just gently tapping it off to get moving I don't get the finesse I get in real life with the clutch so see how they're lined up now alright we'll probably do one more pull up so one thing you want to do with tractor trailers, you always want to take your time. Rushing is just going to make it worse. And so, you know, you see a lot of new people, like, they're trying to just go too fast. And you'll see some, like, old guys who've been there 100 years doing it. And just take the time, and they put it in on the first try. They get it on door on the first try. They back the trailers together on the first try. And somebody rushing will usually take three times as long. And so I think I'm going to probably miss it again. It's hard to see in the mirror. The pixelation's tough. All right, let's see how close I am. Oh, I think we did it. Oh, we're close, man. We're real close. 
I'm actually pretty close. I can't push these. That thing weighs so much. So I'm just going to go forward a little. Let me see if I can't grab it. I'm close. So I'm going to go forward. One, one thing you'll do, IRL, is you'll get out. So even on the tractor trailer exam, you can get out, I think, twice. And so you get out and you say, okay, I need to have the back of the trailer come to the right. All right, so how do I do that? Well, we're really close. See how close we are? I only need to come over like, I don't know, 12 inches, two feet maybe. And so my tractor is already cocked off to the left side like this. So I'm going to go forward. And if I pull to the left here like I am, the trailer, the back of that trailer is going to get closer to the pintle. Now I'm going to start going right to straighten it up. And I'm going to go tractor with trailer. So we're lined up. If you look, we're lined up. Tractor's in line with the trailer. I'm going to go a little bit of left wheel. And we're going to go backward and see if I can't snatch it. All right, slow, slow, slow. Probably pretty close. Let's see where we're at. That's damn close. Okay, just a little bit off. All right, tractor with trailer again. Check the trailer. I need to come wheel left a little bit. You know, I wouldn't be telling myself this IRL. I just do it, but... All right, there we go. Going the other way a little bit. Now I'm already steering back to save it. Why am I... I must have hit it. I got to be close, man. Okay, I'm going to come forward a little bit. We'll cheat just a second here, just so this doesn't take all day. In real life, it's a lot easier to get these lined up because you can actually see in your mirrors. All right, now I want to cut it really hard. Cut it, cut it straight, straighten out, straighten out. Now I'm going to keep a little bit of turn in there. There we go. Okay, good. So we got it. Uh, I'm just going to leave the tractor brakes off. This trailer, the brakes are already on in this trailer, so we wouldn't have to worry about I could leave all the other brakes off because until I hook that airline up, it's not going to uh, it's not going to detach it. So now the brakes are off on the on the kite. And let's get out of here. So look at my tack. See how my tack stays close within the range? This is why, you know, I've talked about this a bunch, why a truck should have like 10 to an 18 speed gearbox usually they have like 10s they have 13s they have uh, 18s is you want to stay within a very narrow uh, tack range and that's because with a truck you always need to, you need to be at your peak torque in order to be able to haul the load so see how my tacks down to 1180 and climbing i'm not going to shift up to 16 because i'm 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 too low in the tack range I'm not going to shift up until I'm at least 1300. So I'm going to stay here, and it's going to take me a while to get there. That's how a truck performs. You know, it's not a car. You know, it's a truck. You know, in a car, you can usually go, say, the speed limit on the highway is 65. You can go 65, whether you're going up hills or down hills. It doesn't matter. You're always going 65. Sometimes, if I was in a hilly section, you'd be going 65, and you go up to go up the hill, and by the top of the hill, you're at 45. And so a truck doesn't. You know, it doesn't do its max speed all the time. Like, this has a limiter. This thing could do over 100 miles an hour if it didn't have a trailer on it. But I put a governor on it like it has in real life so that you can't. But, um, you know, when a truck's pulling a load, it, it might not be able to get through all its gears. You know, it, you know you're going to have to go f to, up to what you, you can, you know, because of the mass of it. You know, you need the proper gear to keep you at peak torque to operate it. What's that over there? Is that a mission? Nope, doesn't appear to be. There's a boat over there. All right, so we're going to go up and we're going to grab some diesel and jet. There is a boat there. I don't know what it's doing. Maybe it's just uh, patrolling. Grab some diesel and jet here. I, I upshifted. So I'm squealing my tires. So if I upshift, I'm squealing my tires. Why? I'm out of my rev range. All right. In real life, would that cause you to squeal your tires? No. What would it do? It would cause you to stall. And in game, one of the reasons why the tires are lower gripped is because you'd be stalling all the time, and people would say the game sucks at stalling all the time. So one of the things 
letting the tire squeal when you're going to stall uh, makes it a little bit more approachable. You know, we're down at 1250. I wouldn't be running at 1250. This is where I'd be running. 14, baby. 1450 uh, is where I'd want to be running. So I'd be running down in 13th gear with a uh, heavy load. This is a lot of mass. Just the trailers are, is a lot of mass. You know, I, I, not with my back, I, was, I can't pick up a single inflated tractor tire. And how many tires we have? One, two, three. That's 12. 12 times 4, so 48. And then, so we have 50 tires on the sucker. And we want to start downshifting here. Downshift, 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 downshift. All right, and we're going to go ahead and set the brakes. You would not slam the brakes on like that. You'd go through the windshield. All right, we want to pump in. Uh, I'm going to pump whatever I can take the most of, so it's likely yeah, that they're probably an even split at this point. It doesn't matter. I'm going to put jet uh, diesel in the front. Pump in. Leave the tractor running because that powers the pumps. There's jet. And as you see, we have 44,000 liters of, uh, of jet fuel and diesel. And we have two 47,000 liter tanks of oil. This has been pumping the whole time we've been playing Career Build Series. So this is pretty much full. What I should do is have the pump jack stop when it, uh, not that it, you know, doesn't really cost any money with electricity. Get infinite electricity with this base, but, um, you know, it's nice to RP it anyways to shut the things down. But I could have it shut itself down when it's, when the, all the tanks are full. Alrighty, so I'm going to get back with you guys when this is full. Let's go ahead. We'll All right, so we are full here. Both trailers are full, so we have full trailer of diesel, full trailer of jet fuel. So let's go ahead and we'll put these away. And we'll head on and we'll stick it back on the bench. So here is a lot of wealth here. We have a considerable amount of fuel. And this is going to be good to put in the benches. This will allow me to move some stuff around. This will also allow me to... Uh, Set, turn it into some cash as well. So this both has the value of cash and it also has the value of making it so that we can run vehicles all over the place. But I really want to get our cash up as you, you know, kind of uh, getting into how to shift the tractor, tr you know, a tractor for a tractor trailer. Again, you want to get out to peak torque, so 1440, and then I upshift. I wait for it to recover, upshift again. I'm going to wait for it to recover, upshift again. Wait for it to recover, upshift again. So you don't just keep tagging through the gears. You want to uh, get back up to peak torque. Once you go past peak torque, there's really no point in staying in the gear. It's better to shift down. And as you can see, we're going to slowly recover this next gear. You start getting longer gears. I've talked about this before, how you stay in those gears longer. And that's when the differential between the gears is larger. So in the tractor, the first, uh, you know, say probably in this the first nine gears are very low so the range between them is very minimal and again that's because you need to be able to get a, a lot of mass moving quickly as you notice as I get up higher in the gearbox or in 13th gear it's taking a lot longer for us to speed up and we're probably not even going to get up to 1400 and so because we're not going to make it to 1400 we're not going to go higher than 13. We'll, we'll, we will not go any faster in a higher gear and we'll actually probably go slower and so that is why we, uh, you know, want to stay at peak torque is, you know, by hauling that load, we need all that power to be able to keep the load moving and get the load moving. All right, so I'll go ahead and I will see you guys when we get back there.
we have a little bit of fog. I have uh, override time and weather off, I believe. So I want to keep shifting down here. I don't want to get below a thousand. That will lug the engine. So every time we go down and we hit a thousand, that tells me I need to downshift. So that's how you do it, IRL. You have your up points and your down points, essentially. And so when I build an automatic transmission, that's essentially what I'm doing, is I tell it what uh, upshifts I want and what downshifts I want. All right, so we're going to go ahead and jump out, take a pic another picture of this good old train here. So I like having the, uh, the road train. It's a cool way to transport things, so I enjoy doing that. And so let's go ahead, we'll do a quick save. All right, and I'm just going to recall it. Let's see where we're at now for fuel, for diesel, and jet. So we have 51, 52 diesel, and 11,817. So we're definitely hurting for diesel. And those should go on the workbench. And let's double check, make sure it took the fuel. So we now have 61,000 liters and 67,000 liters. So it's a good split. Uh, Currently, that's about, I think, what's diesel going for? $2? Something like that. Let's uh, take a check, see what we could get for that. It's probably not, it's not yet populated here, but let's see if some of the other ones are populated. So up here is not populated, and down here, what are we looking at? So we could sell diesel there for $3. So that's $180,000 in diesel we have sitting right there. And I think Jet's probably going about 4 uh, four dollars, so that'd be double that. So that'd be three hundred sixty thousand dollars. So that's a lot of cash right there in case we need it. So let's go ahead and let's see what we have that we could do. So we have a mission up here. Blue Cabrio has an emergency. Seven thousand now. It's Cabrio is a car. It's a convertible. So likely it's on the stretch of road here. So I think we're gonna go do this one. So let's see what the weather looks like here. So I'll just open it up. We'll pretend this is like a weather report. So we have a little bit of fog, 30% fog. It's not a ton. Let's go ahead and we'll take, let's go ahead and let's take the Seagull and let's load in the, the diesel, the uh, jet fuel containers. And that way it will allow me to Put some in the bench up at Draymore, and then we can go do this mission. So we'll grab this. Go ahead. Uh, let's go ahead and grab the two. I have a lot of. Oh, I have a search on there. I have a lot of builds I've done recently. So here's the Jet A pallet, and so I'm just gonna. We'll drag them in. I could put them in there, but I, I'd rather drag them in. I think it'll be more fun. And so, let's see, this can go this direction. We want to make sure they're flipped just so that I can get at both of them. So let's do uh, paste that. We'll rotate this, and we'll get this as close as we can get it. Probably there. Actually, it's offset, so. We'll go to there. Okay, and that's now set up, and the hose on the other side. Okay, so I need to re-grab it, and the reason, nope, nope. Okay, I did, uh, last time I cut off the panel, so that's good now. All right, and we're going to go ahead, we'll grab logic, we'll grab the rope, and I will attach these like so, and we'll spawn it in. And let's make sure these spawn full of jet. If not, um, if they didn't, that's fine. I will fill them up myself when it gets in there. That might actually be preferable to fill it up. Where is it right there? Fluid meter. Okay, so these are empty. I don't know if, if this will winch it up with these full. That's a lot of mass, so it's actually probably better. I can fill it once it gets in there. Often you do that, you move the container into the vehicle, and then you can do it so that you're not, um, you know, you're not trying to lift an enormous amount of mass. That's 2,200 liters, you know, so we're talking about a ton of piece at least. All right, and so those are attached. Let's make sure. Okay, those are the lock pallets. They're off. And we'll start bringing it in with the winch. Should snap on the tracks pretty quickly. And there it is. It snapped. All right, so all the way up the back one should be snapping in if it isn't already. And we'll drag these suckers in. 
Nice. So I'm just going to let out the winch a little bit because it's trying to take it off of the gripper. There we go. And I just need to bring it in just a hair. Okay. A little bit more. There we go. All right. So those are both in now. Let's go ahead. I'm going to click on the front pallet lock. That just breaks it. And we'll shut the door. All right. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hit the other pallet lock as it pushes it in. Now it's locked. The pallets are locked to the track, as you can see. So that locks us in nicely. And we're going to raise the ramp. Two clicks. We'll bring it all the way up. And let's get getting. All right. So battery one, two, systems avionics. Batteries are discharging, as you can see. Why is that one showing a charge? Oh, it's probably it's probably stealing the other battery. That's fine. Uh, fuel's good. Fuel valve one's on. Crank and left. All right, one is up. Number one generator's coming on. Number one hydraulics. Uh, fuel valve number two. Number two started. All right, number two is up. Generator for number two is on. Hydraulics number two is on and rising. All right, good. So we are going to go pick up our clearance. Uh, 6 6 here Golf is uh, ready to pick up our clearance. We have information echo. We're going to be going IFR from... I was trying to think what's... Uh, let's go IFR to the nuke plant to Draymore. All right. Uh, I'm trying to think of, just think of the read back. Uh, we'll see what I don't know what direction the wind is going. We'll take off to the west. So zero. So it's uh, zero seven two. So it'll be a two five two. Uh, six zero golf. Uh, you're uh, you're cleared via vectors direct to nuke plant. Direct to Draymore. Uh, fly runway heading. Climb and maintain. One, uh, 2,000 feet. Runway heading. That'll be 252. Expect runway 25. Uh, go ahead and contact ground on 21.9 for taxi. 21.9 for taxi. We're cleared. Uh, vectors direct to nuke plant, direct to Draymore. Uh, runway heading up to 2,000. Uh, six year golf. Uh, Rebec correct, six year golf. So we'll start taxiing. Flaps coming down. Now, ground. This is uh, six year golf. We're at the blue hangar, ready to taxi. Uh, we can take an intersection for two five. Uh, six year golf. Go ahead and uh, taxi straight ahead and hold short runway two five. Uh, straight ahead, hold short of two five uh, six year golf. All right, we're coming out. Just need the net. We just need the beacon on uh, during the day. Uh, six year golf. You can go ahead and contact tower on one two zero point seven. Uh, one two zero point seven. Thanks. Six here calls. Uh, let's do the uh, before takeoff checklist. Flaps are set. Hydraulics are set. Props are set. Before takeoff checklist complete. Uh, six here golf. We're ready at uh, runway two five. Uh, six here golf. I think my left brake's not working. I have to fix that. Six here golf. We're clear for takeoff. Uh, Fly runway heading, climb, maintain uh, 2,000 feet. At 2,000 feet, you can turn direct to uh, New Plant. Uh, clear for takeoff, runway 25. We'll uh, go runway heading up to uh, 2,000 and direct Nuke at 2,006 Sierra Golf. I uh, rebuild correct 6 Sierra Golf. All right, here we go. All right, gear's coming up. 100 knots, flaps coming up. Alright, autopilot is on. Alright, and we'll set, uh, he said out, out of 2000, we're gonna go direct nuke, so here's nuke. Would they have you fly over a nuke plant? No. <laughs> but uh, just kinda a little bit of a more of an IFR route. Alright, we're gonna start bringing the props back. Landing taxi. Logo can come off. It's the day. I don't need logo on. If I can hit the right key, we can actually shut it off. All right, starting to bring the prop back. I need to fix that still. Reminds me of all the things I need to fix. All right, there's 2,000, so do nav GPS heading holds off. And the bearing, too. We'll wait till we line up. Okay. 
I didn't put it in. So it's trying to go it's trying to go to zero zero. It's trying to go to the zero point. That's six zero golf in contact. Good departure on one two six point nine. One two six point nine six zero golf thanks. Uh six zero golf is uh two thousand direct to uh new plant. Uh six zero golf radar contact. And that's all they tell you. And we're going by the it was mon monkey brain. Uh, after takeoff checklist, uh, gears up, flaps are set, lights are set, uh, props are set. After takeoff checklist, click. Up, oh, I didn't fill up with jet fuel. <laughs> I knew I was gonna do that. I forgot to fill up the jet fuel. Shocker, shocker, shocker. Whatever. We'll do it later. There's no place to sell jet fuel there, and I don't really use any jet fuel craft right now except the new turboprop, so. I'm gonna try to do some more jet fuel craft this career build series. I'll eventually get into them. You know, the, the main reason I don't use them is one of the main reasons why you use a turbine aircraft is turbines are, one, they're very simple. The likelihood of them breaking down is very rare. So for things like pasture applications, they're very, very incredibly reliable. Uh, and so because they're that reliable, so what we want to do is back this up, 279, 279. Okay, so we put that in the heading hole. Let's talk about this first. So we, we back up our heading. So that's the, the bearing we're going to right now to nuke. All right, I can see nuke is right ahead of us. I think that's where, let me just double check. Yep, see it's right under us. So now what we do is we switch to our heading hold, which now it's on heading hold. Now what I do is I go and I put my next waypoint in here, which is gonna be the final approach course for Gray Moore. That goes in. That's in the backup. So now as soon as we hit nuke plant, all I have to do is deselect heading hold and it's gonna turn me direct to where I wanna go. And so that's how we'd often do it. And one of the other reasons is, let's say your GPS has a, has something wrong with it. You can, all you have to do is deselect GPS or turn on your heading hold. And now you have the same heading you're turning. If your heading bug was over here, let's say you left your heading bug where it was. So it would have been 252 and your GPS screws up. If you click heading, that's gonna turn you. Well, you might, it might be dangerous to turn. You might have restricted airspace. You might have an aircraft there. So by always putting it back to where you're actually heading, so right now we're heading 340, so good habit. Put in 340. Now I can still leave it in, in uh, nav, in GPS. I don't have to actively make it do heading hold, but that's a backup. So let's say I'm getting ready for my next, like I did last time, I can go ahead and just click on heading hold and we're not gonna turn. And you also wanna straighten up your heading bug. That's six year golf, you can go ahead and uh, descend Maintain a uh, 1,000. And uh, let us know when you have Graymore in sight. Uh, not a 1,000, but you know, 6 year ago. I already have it in sight. Often we we wouldn't tell them when we have it in sight. That one, of the reasons AT, one of the reasons ATC wants you to tell them you have things in sight is because then they can make it your job to, um, to navigate. And even, you know, you know, and so as pilots, we often don't we don't uh, take on that extra responsibility because why you know it's ATC's responsibility to keep us separated as an IFR aircraft from traffic and to help us navigate you know and so not really help us navigate but you know monitor our navigation and so for example like they could say uh, uh, you know uh, six air golf you have traffic at one o'clock high right so one o'clock high right there I see them we wouldn't say traffic in sight because what they would do is uh, they'd say maintain separation. So they now it's my job to make sure I don't run into that aircraft. Well, guess what? I'm on an IFR flight plan. It is their job for me not to run into that aircraft. So what we would say is looking. And then we'd say to each other, traffic at sight, one o'clock high. And then they would say traffic's passing off of your uh, three o'clock. That's what they'd say to me. So we wouldn't have to. So by us not acknowledging that we see it, we don't have to maintain visual separation. They would tell us maintain visual separation if we told them we see it. If we don't see it, we can't maintain visual separation. All right, so it's runway two for that 
uh, so I see Dream More. I'm not going to tell them that I see Dream More. We wouldn't tell them we see the airport until we're ready to just come in visually. So it's a runway two. It's actually runway three. So see that number climbing? All right. Uh, now it goes heading holds off. It's going to turn me to the, you know, because I put the bug right on the runway. And there it is. So I'm going to go ahead and autopilot off. And I'm going to line up myself. We would be on like a 10 mile final IRL. This is a very short final. And so the distances are so short, it would be like we'd be south of the air and buy them for a normal final. Okay. Not very more than site six year golf. Now I'm ready to visually take over. I don't want to follow their rules anymore. I just want to go where I want. They're going to say, um, now because it's an uncontrolled field, they'd say, uh, you know, uh, you can uh, contact Draymore traffic and. Uh, would you like to cancel your flight plan? We say no. We want to cancel on the ground because that way they still have to keep track of us. So we're covering our butt by having them keep track of us. All right, so I'm trimming. That's uh, six-year golf. We'll cancel on the ground. Uh, Dream more traffic. Six-year golf. Short final runway three. I think it's runway three. Six-year golf. Uh, Dream more traffic. Uh, landing checklist. Uh, gear is down. Flaps are set. Lights are set. Props are set. Before land check is complete, I have a little bit of wind going on here. It's actually a uh, little bit of a, we have a direct crosswind from my right. I can tell by the way the waves are moving. Starting to slow down. We actually have a good bit of wind here. So I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to stick it. Sticking it, sticking it, sticking it, sticking it, sticking it. I have reversers on here, so I'm confident I can get it stopped. If I didn't have reversers, I probably would have gone around. But with reversers, I'm in reverse thrust here. I'm not worried about stopping. It uh, This also, like, if I was landing the Cap Air jet, if you watched Cap Air series, I would come in here with the Cap Air jet. I would not be sticking that. That touches down at like 100-something knots. This touches down around 50 knots. And so that, um, you know, that's touching down at least at 115. And so this is touching down at 50 knots if you think about it, you know, how much brake do you need in a car to stop at 115 miles an hour as a put, which would be more than 115 miles an hour, but 115 knots compared to trying to stop that same car at, uh, you know, 50 knots. So it's, uh, it requires a lot more braking, a lot more, um, you know, you can't eat up much runway. With this plane, I knew I could eat up the runway, so I didn't want to go around. But IRL, it would have gone around. Not stabilized. It's a good way to break or blow a tire, so it's it's not worth it. IRL, but you know, knew I could land it without breaking anything, so I just did it. All right, so we are now in the hangar. Let's go ahead and we'll go into beta. All right, beta. Let's go ahead, and so we want to tap the brakes first and set the parking brake. Then I want to go ahead and I want to start shutting them down. One and two are down. Gen one, Gen two. Hydraulic one and two. Flaps will go up probably, unless they're electric flaps, I'd put those up before hydraulics. One of the reasons I have my autopilot set up this way is the way that it would be IRL is the autopilot master, none of these modes work without the autopilot master on. And you saw why is when I was ready to take over and hand fly, all I did was click one button and we're good to go. And in the last couple of jets I flew, um, I'm trying to remember the Eclipse. I can't remember if the Eclipse had a autopilot disconnect on the on the yoke, but we had autopilot disconnect on the yoke. We could, I think, double tap something and it would disconnect the autopilot. And so as soon as you're ready to take over, you could go click, click, and now the autopilot's off and you don't have to fight it. You could also pull really hard and it would kick the autopilot off. So if the autopilot was trying to steer you towards traffic and you could muscle it away if you couldn't get it shut off quick enough, but uh, able to get it shut off pretty quick. So. Let's go ahead and do a full shutdown here. So that's all shut down. Strobes can come off. Nav, beacon. So we're kind of doing it in reverse. Lights are now off. Coming up through. Avionic systems. Bat, bat. And we're down. I don't know if I showed you the ground service panel here. We brought these along for a ride that we didn't need to. But um, not the end of the world. So here's the ground service panel. So right here, it, you open that up. As I can see, so what we have here is it shows our fuel and pounds. We also can activate the pumps. So it's actually kind of cool how I set this up. I set it up realistically. So 
often what you'll have is you have your crossfeed pumps. So you have pump going this way, pump going this way, or you have it valved out. And so the, that will allow me to balance the wings. So I have crossfeed in there. I can balance the wings if I have too much fuel on one side. And if you get really low on fuel in game, it will prioritize one tank first. So if I have a spawner in here and I have a spawner in here, I'll pick a tank and it will fill this tank 100% full. This one will be empty. Now that would probably cause us to crash because this wing weighs a lot more than the other wing. 9,000 pounds more than this wing. Just the wing. So it's way out there, a lot of weight. So what I can do is crossfeed. So in my ground service panel, I use the same pumps. If I turn on pump one, it will pump into the system and into this wing. Pump two will go into this wing. And so I can independently, so if, say for example, see this wing has uh, less fuel, I could start by putting more in here and then, so I could start filling one and then when I get close, click this and now they're even. So there's the fluid hose there. And then I have my voltage. As you can see, we have a discharge. I don't know why two, sh oh, you know why? I have both battery switches off. Uh, battery number one is the hot bus. So battery one operates all of things like doors and lights. Like if I left lights on, battery one would deplete. So as you can see, it has a very small discharge because things like, for example, um, the control surfaces are hooked up to the to the gyro, those will start flickering and using battery. So it's set up that way so that everything's on battery one so that let's say I left this out in the world for like a day and it ate all of my battery, this battery's still 100% and we can do everything on that. So battery, see that one's going down and this one should be static. So you see this one, not moving, a, not moving at all. This battery over here is dropping because that's on the hot bus. And then we have an electrical anchor, so I could plug in to ground power, and that would charge the system up. So, don't know if I had shown that off before, but I uh, thought that would be cool for some people to see. All right, so let's go ahead and drag this back in the bench, and let's go do this this uh, mission. All right, so we want... Oh, don't do that. Uh, let's go ahead and load. All right, that was fine. I just uh, wanted to be sure I wasn't hitting the wrong thing. All right, we'll grab our tow truck. All right, there we go. And let's get getting. All right, where are we at here? So we need to go up. So as I can see, it says a, a blue cabrio has an emergency. So it's got to be somewhere on here. So let's take a quick pick here. Trying to do a kind of a composite thumbnail. All right, so let's get getting. I should. Uh, I don't have any dogs with me. <laughs> so this tow truck also has a bench seat. Often, uh, you know, if if a tow truck driver picks you up. You know, you can't ride in the in the car sitting on the back. You can't ride in the car being towed usually. So they'll usually have a couple seats that you can um, sit in. Sometimes some of the tow trucks, they'll have a bench seat behind the driver's seat. And that way, if you know if you had a family in a car and the car broke down, they could probably get everybody. And so you might have to ask special for the, um, the larger tow truck. You might want to say to them, hey, you know, there's, uh, there's five of us. You know, do you have a tow truck that we can all ride in? You know, or else, you know, you'll have to take a cab or something. So you're paying for the cab and you're paying for the uh, tow truck. So uh, keep that in mind. But uh, a lot of them have bench seats, so I kind of put a bench seat. That way I could get three across in here. There's a little hairy going down here, so. I usually don't like this thematically. It's just, you know, it's kind of driving off-road. You drive on the road, but um, kind of fun. So... I think I'm gonna, definitely going to put on put on hold uh, any Industrial Frontier stuff uh, as far as metal goes and ores until after uh, June 9th when we know what the update is. I'm really hoping that the update improves that. That was a great update, but the logistics are just very illogical, and it makes it very hard to, especially in a career game, to make that work. So hopefully they uh, they kind of fix that up. All right, so I'll see you guys when we get to the Cabrio. We don't know where it is, but I assume it's on the road.
fire with my little eye, a blue cabriolet that's on fire. There we go. So I'm going to downshift at uh, the proper downshift point. And I'll squeal my tires. <laughs> the, the, these cabrios are enormous. All right, let's go ahead and set the brake. Turn on our hazards here. Let's get a pick because I need, always need a good thumbnail. All right, so it looks like the wheels are actually missing as well. All right, uh, let's see. Fire extinguisher I have on the other side. This car is way oversized. One thing that I, uh, kind of bugs me is scale problems. All right, so there's the old three grand. All right, two people. I guess we can leave the car there. I'll take it if I if I need to, but uh, it's missing a tire, so missing a full wheel. The wheel is off. But, um, so it looks like see that's hard. So I bet you I can't move this. I bet that's static. So when you build an add-on, sometimes you can put make things static. I bet that's actually static. So. All right, so there's some peepage. Got some peeps in there. Doesn't look uh, not doesn't make a great picture with the uh, light blast in my eyes. All right, I should have put this fire extinguisher back, but I'll do it later. All right, so <laughs> you gonna make me do a three point turn up here? You guys suck. All right, uh, so I gotta do a three point turn. So one, I'm gonna start with backing up. Take the parking brake off. I'm going to try to see in my mirror my wheel. I can't because of where my glass is. I need an XML let at the windshield. but So I'm making sure my wheel turns all the way. Give it a little tap -a there. So this is geared nice and low, so I can go nice and slow. If your vehicle's jumping, your gearing's too high. You need to uh, need to change, or, or you need to make it so you can feather your clutch. Like with me, my my clutch will start disengaging after a while if I don't press the W key. So it's like feathering the clutch, and so it makes it a little bit better. All right, so three points completed. Let's get on here. So just down where that uh, lighthouse is is where we can drop these people off. So I'm in neutral, so I've been revving in neutral. I, I keep the uh, game sounds down because they... Whoa, 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 stop. That would have been ugly if I went running off the side here. I, I have yet to build a crane, so that would be kind of hairy. Hello, people. I have yet to build a... I, I have built some cranes, but I haven't built any sort of road going crane, so that would be kind of fun at some point to do that. The thing that kept making me want to build a crane was the gold dirt separator for the Industrial Frontier DLC is 7.5 meters tall. A real one, you should be able to dump a front end loader in, and in game, you should be able to dump it from ground level. And they made it 7.5 meters tall, so I was going to need to do a crane or something or an auger to get it in there. So that was the last reason I wanted a crane, but I have put plenty of cranes up barges. Often I'll barge, you know, I'll, I'll use a crane on a barge, but it would be kind of cool to build a crane. Maybe we'll do that at some point. And so we should be building up a good diesel reserve at Draymore. That's the second time I brought the Seagull in there and left the full Seagull's complement of fuel in there. So it's like 9,000 liters every time I take a run in there. So, All right, so nice mission. That was a fun one. 
Yeah, I think one of the keys to having fun and not getting bored is coming up with some of your own missions as well. You know, these, sure, these get repetitive, but if you kind of intersplice them with your own stuff, it's kind of, you know, I, I'm happy to get back to this. It's been a little while since I've done some missions, and I'm enjoying it. So, All right, yeah, so I think we'll call it there. I think that was uh, some fun missions there. We got some fuel moved. I think that's always good. And, uh, you know, kind of go through some of these missions, try to get one going. And uh, when some good missions come up, we'll uh, do that in the next episode. All right. See you in the next one.